I'm Jana Mohamed Zaki and this is Nightline, the top stories. Kuala Lumpur Summit produces tangible outcomes, says Prime Minister. And more than 300,000 households in Selangor to experience water supply disruption over odour pollution. The Kuala Lumpur Summit 2019 has closed on Saturday with tangible outcomes being outlined to bring progress and improve the state of Muslims. Prime Minister Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad, who is also the chairman of the summit, in his closing remarks highlighted the need for the four countries, Malaysia, Qatar, Turkey and Iran, to work together to bring the ideas discussed during the four-day summit to bigger platforms that will benefit the Muslim world. Tun Dr Mahathir also said the summit was a success with 18 successful exchange of ideas. The summit itself was not held to rival the organisations of Islamic countries OIC but for participants to look into areas for possible collaborations. We are not here to replace any other Muslim platforms. Neither are we intending to create different categories or classes of Muslims, nations, nor to un undermine others. It is a congregation of a few Muslim nations of which some of the leaders wanted to get together and discuss some areas that are possible for us to establish collaborations that will first benefit the nations involved and then taken on to a bigger platform and collaboration to benefit the Muslim world as a whole. Tun Dr Mahadi in his closing remarks at this summit said there were a successful exchange in various fields including advanced high technology, media collaborations, centre of excellence, food security and youth leadership and exchange programmes. He also said the most important aspect of all the focus of the summit was the need to be able to produce and create new indigenous technologies. Ridan Hussein reporting for Nightline TV3. Speaking in a media conference after the conclusion of the Kuala Lumpur Summit 2019 on Saturday, Dr. Mahathir said rich Muslim countries should invest more in less well-off Muslim nations so that prosperity and progress can be shared among them. Tun Dr. Mahathir said it is felt that Muslim countries have so far not invested enough in other Muslim countries that needed their help. But we feel that Muslim countries so far have not invested enough in other Muslim countries needing their investment. So we hope that as a result of this conference, uh, many more Muslim countries who are rich enough to invest uh, in the poorer countries. Thank you. To Dr Mahathir said Muslim countries would not be subjected to forced assimilation and trade sanctions if they were self-reliant and work with other Muslim nations to ensure that any punitive measure imposed can be circumvented. Meanwhile, Tun Dr Mahathir dubbed sanctions as those imposed on Iran and Qatar a criminal act and were an act of aggression at an international level. He pointed out the sanctions on the Middle East countries have not only affected them econom economically but caused Malaysia to lose a big market and trading partner. Such sanctions and embargoes are not going to be exclusively for Iran and Qatar. With the world witnessing nations making unilateral decisions to impose such punitive measures, Malaysia and other nations must always bear in mind that it can be imposed on any of us. That is the more, that is the more reason for us to be self-reliant and work towards that which with other Muslim nations to ensure that if and when 
such measures are imposed upon us, we are capable of forcing it. The Prime Minister said there was a need for Muslim countries to mutually invest in areas such as property and finance to boost trade. He explained that this was not a rejection of non-Muslim investment, but Muslim countries have so far not invested enough in other Muslim countries. On another matter, the Prime Minister was asked to comment on the Indian government's claim that Dr Mahathir's comments on New Delhi's recently improved Citizenship Amendment Act is factually inaccurate and called for refrain from commenting on developments there. India's Ministry of External Affairs claimed that the new law provides for citizenship through naturalization to be fast-tracked for non-citizens who are persecuted minorities from three countries. That is their opinion. My opinion is my opinion. Whether you want to leave, believe me or believe other people, you are free to do so. You are the press. Dr. Mahathir had said that the law was regrettable as it was discriminatory to Muslims. The Prime Minister said he was sorry to see that India, despite being a circular state, was acting to deprive some Muslims of their citizenship. <laughs> Meanwhile, in India, Prime Minister Narendra Modi met his Council of Ministers on Saturday to discuss security measures to end violent protests. As thousands of people joined fresh rallies against a contentious citizenship law on Saturday, with 20 killed so far in the unrest. According to authorities, the death toll jumped after demonstrations turned violent on Friday. In the most populous state of Uttar Pradesh, leaving at least 11 dead, including an 8-year-old boy who was trampled. On Saturday, more protests began in cities including Chennai, capital of southern Tamil Nadu state, and Patna in eastern Bihar state. Crowds were also expected again in the national capital, New Delhi, despite curfews and a draconian regulation to shut down protests against the controversial citizenship law that is seen as anti-Muslim. Meanwhile, Deputy Yang Dipertuan Agung, Sultan Nazrin Muizuddin Shah, in his royal address at the closing of the summit, called on Muslim-majority nations to make more effort to aid Muslim refugees worldwide. He told the delegates that foremost for him was how to help Muslims most in need of assistance worldwide, those made refugees without a nation to call their own. Sultan Nazrin said he took note of the discussions by delegates from over 50 Muslim countries over the last two days, centered on the theme of development to enhance their national sovereignty. According to him, currently there are around 70 million displaced persons worldwide and that the harsh reality was that many Muslim nations have not done enough to help Muslim refugees from war-torn countries such as Syria, Palestine, Afghanistan and Iraq. But the Muslim world could do much more, particularly as it develops and grows in wealth and power. Many Muslim-majority nations are more affluent now. Many more of us could therefore be working much harder to raise awareness, to contribute to the global dialogue, and to provide the financial and material support that humanitarian aid efforts so desperately need. Sultan Nazrin also noted that a comprehensive and sustainable development focusing on poverty eradication and improving livelihood can put in place healthy political institutions and administrative structures capable of producing good governance to protect the rights of all citizens as well as refugees. That is the highest number of refugees per capita. The young Dipatuan Agung, Al Sultan Abdullah Riyayatuddin Al Mustafa Bila Shah, said that efforts to boost and spread Islam in the country were implemented with a comprehensive system. The effort is to ensure that Islam is always respected and exemplified by all.
the Yang Di Pertuan Agong and the Raja Permaisuri Agong, Tunku Hajah Azizah Amina Maimunah Iskandaria, on Saturday graced the opening of the Pulau Pinang Shariah Judicial Complex. The royal couple was accompanied by Pulau Pinang Yang Di Pertuan Negeri, Tun Abdul Rahman Abbas, and his wife, Toh Puan Majimur Sharif, and Chief Minister, Chow Kon Yao. The Sharia Judicial Complex was built in 2012 and fully completed in 2016 at a cost of 32 million ringgit. In his speech, the king expressed hope that the posts of the chief judges of the Sharia court would be enhanced by qualifications to enhance their careers. Al Sultan Abdullah also shared his experience of meeting with Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, in the United Kingdom. Dalam hal ini, Bila berasa kagum kerana Alhamdulillah setakat ini negara kita dapat diurus dengan sebaik mungkin Mungkin boleh diperbaiki dari masa ke semasa Tetapi dia berasa bangga dapat lihat keharmonian penduduk-penduduk uh, di negara kita khasnya di Pulau Pinang ini the king and queen then attended a luncheon at the state's oldest Nasi Kanda restaurant, Hamidia Restaurant, which is 112 years old, at Labo Campbell. Also present was Media Prima Burhad Group Chairman Datuk Said Hussein Aljunit. The king and queen spent about an hour at the Indian Muslim restaurant. The Sungai Semenyih water treatment plant had to be fully shut down Saturday following an incident of odour pollution in Sungai Semenyih, causing unscheduled water supply disruption for more than 328,000 households in the district of Petaling, Hulu Langat, Kuala Langat and Sepang in Selangor and parts of Putrajaya. According to the head of corporate communications for Air Selangor, Abdul Halim Matsom, the source of the pollution was traced to the Indah Water Consortium, IWK Sewerage Treatment Plant in Bukit Makota. The plant had to be shut down at 9.50 a.m. this morning and Air Selangor activated its emergency response plan to assist residents in the 348 areas affected. 70 tankers and 12 jumbo lorries have been deployed to community service centres in the various affected districts. Currently, there are no estimates on when the water supply will resume. Those who are affected can refer to the AI Selangor's website and also on their Facebook and Instagram account for more information. Plus, Malaysia Berhad Plus on Saturday issued its travel time advisory for the North-South Expressway users ahead of the Christmas and New Year holidays starting from December 21st to January 1st, 2020. Its Chief Operating Officer Zakaria Ahmad Zabidi said this was part of an effort to prevent congestion and traffic dispersal on the highway rest areas and toll plazas this festive period. In a statement today, he said road users from the Klang Valley heading towards further destinations such as Perlis, Kedah, Pulau Pinang, North Pera and Johor were advised to enter the highway before 9 a.m. Those heading to destinations closer to the Klang Valley are advised to enter the highway after 3 p.m. Those from Perlis, Kedah, Pulau Pinang, North Pera and Johor travelling to the Klang Valley during the same period are advised to enter the highway before 9am. Whereas those from other states or destinations that are nearer to the Klang Valley are recommended to enter the highway after 3pm. Plus said it strongly encourages the public to closely follow the travel time advisory schedule as they stand a better chance of experiencing a smoother journey. Plus also advises users to reload their touch-and-go carts earlier and to ensure their touch-and-go carts have sufficient balance at all times. Users can get the latest traffic information by calling the toll-free plus line, follow its Twitter service or highway electronic message boards.
coming up after this break, Nightline's eSports segment. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now it's time for Nightline's eSports segment for the latest gaming news. Thousands of creative cosplayers have gathered for the annual Comic Fiesta convention happening at the Kuala Lumpur Convention Centre, KLCC. Hundreds of exhibition booths showcasing unique artwork and comic book memorabilia are on display at the annual cosplay event, which also features competitive eSports tournaments. One Izul Islam has the details. Welcome to the eSports segment with me, One Isul Islam. Happening here at the Kuala Lumpur Convention Center is the annual Comic Fiesta. Now, what is the Comic Fiesta? It's where thousands upon thousands of people have gathered to showcase their favorite uh, cause, a player, or as well as their favorite characters from in-game movies, from uh, comics, and as well as anime. So many creative people here in one spot to showcase everything to anything like i said thousands have gathered here to participate in several competitions as well as attend and see all the different merchandises displayed at all the several booths but one special place here at the comic fiesta the new and established gaming city this gaming city is the esports hub where players can come and participate in esports competitions and tournaments one of those competitions is the eSports Corporate League or the Corporate eSports Tournament where companies from around Malaysia have gathered and are competing against one another in four different gaming titles. We have PUBG Mobile, Mobile Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive as well as Dota 2. Now, to talk more about this initiative, the Gaming City, let's talk to some of our uh, organizers here as well as uh, some of the players. So the Gaming City, uh, it's the third year in a row. Uh, we actually fulfilled the third pillar of uh, an ACG event, which is the gaming event. Uh, what we want to do is to bring uh, a lot more, um, how to say, gaming activities into uh, the ecosystem within Malaysia. And we believe that Comic Fiesta is a very good um, marriage, right? I mean, I think this is uh, my first uh, participation, first time joining this kind of tournament. But I think it's a very good, uh, it's a very good effort and good, very good initiative, because like you know, like sometimes we at the workplace, sometimes we do play games just to release tension and together with our friends during lunchtime and whatnot. But now it has to, uh, now it's another level, which we represent our company uh, and playing uh, in the in. in the, the esports industry. A wonderful initiative indeed, the esports hub or gaming city here at Comic Fiesta. Now, uh, like I said before, there is the corporate esports tournament where Media Prima are also participating. We have five teams in the knockout rounds, which will be happening today. And of course, the final round will be happening tomorrow. Prizes are in store as well as a trophy, such as uh, gaming peripherals, gaming masks, gaming headsets, and keyboards will be awarded to the winners or the top three for each game. So there's four games that are being played, which is Mobile Legends, Dota 2, PUBG Mobile, as well as Counter-Strike Global Offensive. All these players from all the corporates around Malaysia have gathered to share that camaraderie, that spirit of esports within the Malaysian esports community. Now that's all from myself, One is Islam, here in KLCC with my cameraman Haji Faisal. Now let's head over back to the studio. Catch you again next time for the next esports segment. Trump signs spending bills, avoiding another holiday shutdown. More on this when we return. Nightline continues. 
U.S. President Donald Trump signed a gigantic 1.4 trillion U.S. dollar spending deal that pumps nearly 50 billion dollars in extra funding into federal agencies. The bill's passage allows both parties to dodge the possibility of a holiday season government shutdown ahead of what's expected to be a contentious election season. The legislation, which easily passed in two parts in the Senate after clearing the House earlier this week, caps a flurry of year-end bipartisanship just a day after Trump became only the third U.S. president ever to be impeached. The deal fulfills spending requirements for the military that were sought by the Republicans, as well as domestic projects prioritized by the Democrats, which include money for the president's U.S.-Mexico border fence, pay raises for military and civilian federal workers and federal funding for election security grants. The spending measures were expected to keep the government running through the fiscal year, which ends September 30th. The massive spending measures were made public earlier this week and headed off a repeat of last year's end of the year impasse that led to a 35-day partial government shutdown, the longest in the U.S. history. Emergency level fires have swept across parts of New South Wales and South Australia as the country's severe heat wave and bushfire crisis continued on Saturday. According to authorities, two people were confirmed dead in South Australia and hundreds of homes are on the brink of destruction. Officials said currently there are currently four fires burning out of control at an emergency level across New South Wales. These include the mega fire at Gospers Mountain and fires at Currawin, Kerry Ridge and Upper Turan Road, Palmasoki. Some major roads heading to the south and west from Sydney were closed and authorities asked people to delay travel at the start of the holiday, Christmas holiday period. It is understood that conditions were expected to improve in coming days before another burst of hot weather in about a week. Stage 4 actions from the Tour de Selangor. Don't go away. Sports Cycling, the Tour de Selangor. Team Sapura cycling rider Marcus Kali once again retained the yellow jersey for the fourth time in a row after the Australian won the fourth stage from Selayang to Sungai Besar on Saturday. The 26-year-old claimed the checkered flag after finishing the 144.6 kilometres race with a time of 3 hours, 16 minutes and 57 seconds. Robin Christopher Rado Lopez from Trunganu Inc. cycling team finished second, followed by Shotaro Watanabe of Aisan Racing Team. Following the win, Kali also retained the polka dot jersey as the king of the hill and the green jersey as the sprint king. Another Sapura rider, Muhammad Nur Ayman Muhammad Zarif, meanwhile retained the white jersey as the best young rider. The last stage will commence on Sunday from Klang to Shah Alam, covering 108.2 kilometres. And that's it for Nightline.